Star Seeds and Their Problems Part 5 Remembering Having Lived in Higher Realms Hello again, thank you for joining me here once more. I hope you are all doing very well. I am Marie Swaru. In this video, I will be referring to star seeds as the main people I'm referring to, but this video applies to anyone who relates to what I'm going to say, and that can include light workers or simply people who are highly conscious and spiritually advanced, whether they consider themselves to be star seeds or not. Although I must insist that, in the end, every soul is, by definition, a star seed. On the other hand, even though everyone is a star seed, this term is best used to describe a soul or a person who is having an experience on earth as a human and who, in their immediate past life or lives, was incarnated elsewhere in the universe as some other race or species. They may be on earth for only one or a few incarnations, and as they were some other race or simply were a space human, any variant of Lyrians but of another culture far away, and for humans on earth, this is by far the most common case. Anyhow, starseeds deeply remember having been something else and remember having lived in much more advanced and peaceful societies. This causes a deep feeling of melancholy in starseeds and a very strong sense of wanting to go back to where they belong, which very often can get to a very high, desperate level, also causing strong emotional fits when missing and thinking about where they belong, not even needing to remember details of their past lives as the simple inner knowing is more than enough to cause all those strong emotional reactions. Here I must also point out another important factor to consider, and that is that a person, starseed or not, may have that strong feeling of not belonging to Earth's material realm not only because they lived in much more advanced civilizations during their past lives, but also because of something much more recent from the point of view of their souls, and that is the memory of the peaceful existence in the afterlife which is also the space between lives. The strong and recent memory of having a perfect body or of not having one at all, and the memory of existing in a realm that so many who remember have described is much more real than life in the material realm, which is incarnated. They remember a place where all their needs are met, where they dwell in love, integration and acceptance, and where they don't even need to walk unless they want to, as they simply think about a place and they are there. Because while there, you are one with the place, because you are not in a place, rather the place is you, as the soul creates the reality it feels it lives in as its mirror reflection. Therefore, while there, you don't see through eyes because, as so many souls who remember have reported, you see everything you want to see and 360 degrees round at once if you want. All this while living the experience that is described as being more real than the so-called material reality as even the colors there are more vivid and there are a lot more of them, many of which their mere concept does not even exist on earth, as well as so many other amazing and positive things that are impossible to describe in words. The strong and recent memory of a place where they manifest all they need instantly while being immersed in an ultra-high vibration matrix that logically ensures that nothing can ever go wrong is so prevalent in the unconscious and subconscious mind of the incarnated soul that it is inevitable for it to surface as that strong melancholy and desperate desire to go back into that place and state of existence. As the starseed grows in its awareness that it does not belong on earth because the frequency there does not match by far. And as the starseeds accumulate knowledge about all this, mostly researching the subject on their own, they end up desperately wanting to communicate with who they feel are their star family, wanting extraction, and understandably so. But not every starseed can be extracted, or is even meant to be extracted, and by their own life plan, the one they designed for themselves when they were between lives. The problem here is that starseeds have researched a lot of its base information online, where there is a vast amount of confusing and distorted information, most of which is placed there with the full intention of manipulating the public's perception of the subject at hand, especially placed there for the starseeds to find. And, as I always say, it is each soul's responsibility to research, discover, and ultimately accept or discard each bit of information. All this causes a lot of misconceptions about life outside Earth and about extraterrestrials and their cultures, where the New Age movement has painted life on other planets as perfect and void of any problems. And to me, 
This is a clear sign that many people who have shared their information about all these subjects have mixed the memory and the perception of having lived on another planet and in a highly advanced culture with the experience of having existed in the higher vibration planes of existence belonging to the after and between life realms. And this last sentence is very important for me personally, as I strongly want all of you to understand my last point there. Many starseeds will want extraction by their star families in a desperate manner, wrongly thinking that it will solve all of their problems, as they are convinced that another planet is an idyllic place when it is in reality just another planet, another place within the same material realm of existence and with all its problems. When deep down where they want to go, where they really long to return to, is to the truly idyllic existence in the higher astral realms of the after and between lives. This means that being extracted in reality is only trading one set of problems for another, in the hopeful and deluded idea that the other will be better. Having said this, life on Earth is vastly accepted as being the most difficult and challenging place to incarnate into, a place where only strong and advanced souls dare go into. But the biggest and most important lesson of living on Earth is to realize that no matter where you are in experience, it is all an illusion as external reality is nothing more than a reflection of who you are. So it does not matter where you think you are, on Earth or in any other faraway place in the universe. Who you are is what matters, and that will reflect outwards because, however compelling it may be, the material realm is nothing more than an illusion. Because no soul has ever left the astral realms, there is nowhere to go back to, or only in an experience, personal manner particular to each soul. I mean, the material biological body is just a translator to limit the vast perception capacity of a soul into a narrow bandwidth of the five or six physical senses. It is when a soul truly remembers what it is when it starts to stop fearing things and experiences in the material realms, knowing everything is illusory from its true unlimited and invulnerable quality as a soul. An advanced soul who has reached that level of awareness then starts to manifest only the best things into its life as it has never left those higher realms where manifestation is immediate. And all the hardship and all the bad things that inevitably will happen in the complicated soup called the material world will change their meaning, and with a change of meaning, they lose their drama and their effect on the soul. Bad things are only bad things because a person, a soul, has decided to interpret them that way. Although this is valid for most of life's dramas, there are some aspects that, in my opinion, can only be bad, like unnecessary suffering and cruelty, although I'm perfectly convinced that from higher up even that is seen differently. Wanting to be extracted or wanting to transcend life on earth in any way and longing to return to a previous, better state is not only perfectly understandable, it is what drives us all forwards, what makes us improve our lives, and it is also why life in the material world must be finite. We are not meant to live forever and we don't want to live there in an incarnated state forever. We must eventually go home, and we will. It is a certainty because we've never left. We are incarnate in these pasty and painful biological bodies for the experience and for the ride, and it is only the interpretation of each soul and where it is placing its attention, the value it gives each experience, which determines if it will be a pleasant ride or a bumpy one. This is why there is nothing more valuable than cultivating who we are internally and not placing all our attention on accumulating material things that are, in the end, only an illusion. They do give us an experience, therefore, they are also valuable and have their places in our lives, and that is what we want. But illusions they are, and the memory of them and of what we did, how we acted while alive are the only things we will take away at the end of our incarnations. And that is what expands our souls, and that is what all souls want, love, integration, growth and expansion. Thank you for watching my video and for liking and subscribing for more. I appreciate it a lot, and I hope to see you here next time. Take care, be fearless and be happy. With much love. Your friend. Marie Swaru.